right, so here we have the beacon joystick combo. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have inside. Let's push that over to the side here. Push this over to the side as well. All right, so here's the carrying case, as you can see, which looks very nice. It also has a strap on the corner to carry it on the go. Now let's go ahead and unzip it here and see what we have inside. Let's start off on the top. Here we have a quick start guide for the beacon and joysticks. Also have some accessories that are included as well. You have this lanyard which you can attach to the beacon. You get a 7 pin magnetic charging cable for the beacon which charges via the USB port. Also get two OTG cables that connect to your phone. One is USB-C to USB-C, the other is lightning to USB-C. Move this all to the side. Okay, so now let's move on to the beacon and remove it from its packaging. Here's the beacon as you can see, and I'll show you more in detail in a bit. Next you have the joysticks. This one is the left joystick attachment, pretty nice. We'll put that right next to the beacon while we unpack the other one here. This is the right joystick attachment. Here on the bottom you have four thumb rockers. The two on the top are for those who like to use their thumbs and index fingers. And the other two are for those who prefer to use their thumbs instead, like a video game controller. Let's take a closer look at the beacon itself. It has a 1.78 inch OLED screen on the front. Right here is the select button. Next to that is the microphone hole. And this is the function button. On the side you have the power button. On the other side you have the speaker. And on the bottom are the magnetic connectors. It also has some ventilation grills on the back so that it doesn't overheat. Let's check out the right joystick. On the front you have the joystick gimbal and to install the thumb rockers is pretty easy. You just push it right into the gimbal opening like so. Over here you have the battery indicator lights. Here on the side is the USB-C charging port, and yes, you can charge both beacon and joystick together. Press the power button to see the charging status of the beacon. On the top are the magnetic pin connectors and two latches to secure it onto the beacon. The left joystick looks the same, but doesn't have any charging function. It does have a scrolling wheel on the top for moving the camera up and down while in flight. Alright, so now that we're done with that, let's see how they all connect with each other. First, you want to make sure that when you connect 
the magnetic parts together that you press on the two latches and lock them in place properly. Next, do the same with the other joystick. You want to make sure that they're locked in securely. Now what you want to do is extend the back of the joystick handles outwards and then fold them downwards. The bottom of the handles is where your phone will go. As I mentioned before, this is the camera's gimbal wheel. And over here is the photo and video button. Okay, so before you can use the beacon, here are some steps that you need to follow. You want to make sure that you activate the beacon and then pair it with the Pro Max. So first thing you do is turn on the beacon and wait for it to start up. Once it's started up, you'll see some on-screen instructions and a green button below. Tap the green button once and you'll now see that it reads connect. Tap on it again and now wait for it to connect to the Pro Max. Now it does take a few seconds to activate. Once it's done, you'll see the activation successful message on screen. You'll now have the option to go through the tutorial, which I highly recommend, or you can skip it. I've already seen the tutorials, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it. If there's a new firmware update available, you'll see it on the screen. I haven't updated it yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. As you can see, it starts the downloading process automatically. It takes a few minutes, so I'm just going to leave it here on the side and let it do its thing. Once the firmware files have been downloaded, it will then start the uploading process. As you can see, it's now uploading the firmware. After the firmware is uploaded, it then starts to initialize it. So you just have to be patient and wait until it's done boot itself and then automatically search for the Pro Max. Once it pairs to it, the live image feed will appear on screen. As you can see, I'm moving my fingers around and it seems to have a low latency without any delays in the video. This green icon here is where you'll find all of the automated flight modes to select from. I see that the new indoor follow mode has been added to it, so that's nice. Here is the video record button. Tap on that and it'll start recording video. There's also a cool thing you can do, which is take photos at the same time you're recording video. That's pretty cool. If you swipe down on the screen, you'll see the update option and two other options for the joystick which are grayed out. When you go to update, you'll see the options for the beacon and joystick. Tap on beacon and you'll see that I've already updated to the latest firmware. You also have other options like upload logs, certification info, and the about section. So now we're going to connect the right joystick to the beacon and update it. Now 
Now you can go to update and you'll see the option to update the joysticks firmware. Once you tap on it, you'll now have the option to update now or ignore it. I'm going to update it now and wait for it to go through the update process. And now you can see that the joystick firmware has been upgraded successfully. They now have added a new option to calibrate the joystick. To access this, swipe down on the screen and go to the joystick calibration. Tap the joystick calibration button and start to move the joystick slowly in all four directions as you see me doing here. Once the calibration is done, it'll go back to the menu screen. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to connect the phone to the remote controller. Connect the USB-C part of the cable to the right joystick. Open the X1 app on your phone and then attach it to the remote. Now you can connect the bottom part of the cable to your phone. Next, you can tap on the hover icon in the app. You'll now see the manual control and smart preview buttons appear but the other options on top, like the album, do not. Tap on manual control, and now you should have a live video feed on your phone. As you can see, on the beacon screen, it says the USB is connected. Now you can control everything via the app, like the video button. You can switch to photo mode. change the camera's manual settings like exposure value as well as the ISO and shutter speed and you can also go into the camera settings and everything is basically the same like when you're using the app alone without the beacon here in the joystick settings, there's a new return to home setting that allows you to backtrack and hover in place. And these are the joystick settings. To record video using the remote, just press and hold the top button for two seconds to start recording. Do the same again to stop recording. The camera's gimbal wheel only works when you're in the air. In photo mode, just press the top button once to take a photo. Now if the phone cable gets disconnected, it will automatically go back to the beacon's live view screen. You can still control the remote as long as they're both paired and the Omni Terrain is activated. If you reconnect the cable to the RC again, the video feed should be restored. Just make sure you follow the same steps I showed you earlier. Stay tuned for the next video where we take it out for a flight test.